Hi guys, and welcome back to Phil's Drone Zone. Now, I've been playing around in motion for about six weeks or so, and I've been creating titles and transitions, etc. But I wanted to recreate the, the Blue Planet photograph as best I could, but I wanted it also to be a 3D revolving Blue Planet. So, like most beginners, what I did was I got straight onto YouTube and I looked for a tutorial. I found two, and the first one was not helpful at all. The second one um, seemed to be going well, but it uh, didn't work, and that's probably because it was done in 2012, and my software is probably a lot different to the software he was using in those days. What I did notice from both tutorials was that they were duplicating the map, and that seemed to be the key to this to me. So armed with that knowledge, I thought, okay, let's see what I can do. Um, and after playing around for a little while, this is what um, I've managed to create. Now, I know it's not that brilliant, um, but since there are no tutorials on this out there, and that might be because people think it's too easy to even be worth bothering about, but there might be other people like me who don't know how to do this, who are just learning this software and would like to know how it's done. So I thought I would upload this just to show people in my situation how they can achieve something like this. Okay, so we've opened up a new motion project and you can see I've got it at 19, 20, 10, 80 and it's uh, 30 frames per second and the project duration is 10 seconds. And so um, what we now need to do, I've also, as you can see, I've set up a little background it's not very complicated, in fact I'm pretty sure that you can all uh, make a much better background than that. Um, it's a very simple little background, just a little bit of movement going on, nothing too much. But I'm not really interested in the background at the moment, I'm going to just rename that BG for background, and then I'm going to close it down. Um, I, I want to focus on the planet rather than on, on the background. So I'm going to create a new group and I'm going to call this one map. So once I've got my new group, I'm going to then into that group, I'm going to import my map. This is a vector map I found online royalty free. So I'm just going to import that into there. And then one of the key things I need to do is I'm going to duplicate that and go to properties and I'm going to move my duplicate over to the right. Just like that. I'm then going to magnify my project because I need to line these up really precisely. Um, and so I'm going to very carefully line them up so that there's no space between the two. And you could actually get to that point and think, oh, that's, that's done the job. And then when you have a look, you unclick it, you can see you have a little bit of a black line there. So um, you need to just pixel by pixel make sure. I, need, I know that this is 849, so I'm just going to type that in. And now when I click away from the project, there's no black join between the two. And we go back to fit. And the next thing I need to do is I'm going to select both of these. I'll just command and click. And then I'm going to create a new group to group them together and I'm going to call this group sphere and this is the group in which I'm going to create the sphere now and I'm going to go to distortion and select sphere and there it is a perfect sphere well maybe not yet um, but if you look into the filters tab when you see sphere you can see that radius box we'll just set that to 270 and then we get this perfect circle Okay, so now if I go to the properties box for our sphere group, um, you can actually, and we drag the cross on the x-axis, we get no rotation, um, which is not what I really want. Um, so what I need to do is go to group and just make sure that that is clipped to 3D. Now when I go back to properties and I move it on the x-axis, then you'll see I now have for my rotating planet. Now, we could leave it there and say fantastic, but it doesn't actually look like um, very much of a planet at the moment. So I need to give it a bit more color for it to begin with. It's a bit bland. 
So I'm going to go to color and I'm going to pick gradient colorize and expand that box and this gives us this little graph chart thing. I'm going to click on the white box at the side, the white slider at the side and make that color into a nice deep blue for our water. The slider on the right side I'm going to click and make that green bright green for a while. It hasn't quite worked out so I will just use the green slider and drag that across until I've got the green and blue roughly as I want it. If I lose some of the blue I can just take this little triangle and pull it back and <clears throat> even up the blue and the green. And that, that looks quite nice so um, the next thing that I want to do it's a bit smooth so I'm just going to go in there and I'm going into Stylize and I'm going to select Indent. Now you can see already something's happened. And so if we zoom in, you can see we've started to create some bumps and stuff on the surface of the, of the globe. And I'm going to go in and change some of these settings just to make it um, a little bit better looking. So I'm going to make the top one, I'm going to make that uh, 0.32 and this one 0.22 and then we're going to do the same for the next one 0.22 for the uh, highlights I'm going to make that 60 and for the sharpness highlight sharpness I'm going to make that 40 and now you can see we've created that really nice effect where the land is is raised above the water um, not really necessary, I guess, but it's a nice little touch. Um, I need to just adjust the green because the indent has brought out some of the lines that were there before and I don't want that. So I'm just going to adjust the green slider until I'm happy with it. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so now we'll go back to fit and then we will add, I'm going to add another filter we're going to go to Blur and I'm going to add a soft focus. And I'm just going to uh, change that to 10. And that's that. That's all I'm going to do with that. And finally, I'm going to go back to Color and choose Brightness. And I'm going to make a very subtle little change here. I'm just going to bring that down to 0.9. It just kind of like takes the sharpness away from the brightness. So that's it, we're finished with the, um, the globe and you can see we have a nice uh, revolving globe uh, moving around its um, axis there. Okay, so the next job is to um, start work on the clouds. So I'm going to go to my map group and then go to the library, uh, to generators and then I'm going to pick clouds. And I'm just going to apply the clouds into the project do exactly the same as we did with the planet go to go to sphere and we have the beginnings of our sphere now we know the planet was 270 radius so I'm gonna make this 268 there you go and I'm gonna to go to properties and I'm going to find opacity and I'm going to reduce the opacity to 50% and there you go, we've got the makings of um, the clouds on the surface of the planet. I'm going to set the blend mode to lighten and then I'm going to go back um, to the generator and I'm going to set the speed to 0.4 and now I'm going to play with the offset X and Y a little bit until I get um, the clouds formations that I like. This is purely personal choice and you can just play around with these until you find something that you like. You might not want too many, you might want um, a lot of clouds, you might want a few clouds. It's really up to you here. So I, I'm just going to uh, find my own settings and type in my own numbers um, and then yeah that looks okay to me. Um, actually, maybe I'm just going to shift it over to the left a little bit. Yeah, that looks okay to me. But it still looks like um, it's a little bit like just a mist covering the globe. So I'm going to go back now 
to our old friend and stylize the indent. And I'm going to grab the indent again and that creates some really beautiful little things going on. We almost get some, we alter some of the parameters here. I'm going to do that at 0.51, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30. And then I'm going to bring the brightness to 40 and the sharpness down to 34. And what happens is we get all sorts of beautiful little things happening, almost like little weather fronts. So I'll drag my clouds over to the beginning of the project. Um, and we almost get like little weather fronts, little stringy, like. Um, and it, it just produce the highlights produce some some lovely cloud effects. Um, play around with that until you get it as exactly as you want it. And that's pretty much it. The only thing that we have to do now that's left to do is to actually animate the planet. And so we're going to go to properties. And I'm going to bring the planet all the way over to the left, and I'm going to set a keyframe. And then I'm going to move the playhead to the end of the project and I'm going to click in the X parameter box and I'm going to drag my planet rotation all the way over to somewhere about there. Okay, and that's that done. So when we play that back now, you'll see there might be a little bit of a problem there because what's happening is it seems to slowly pick up speed, then get faster, and then slow down again. And that's a function of the keyframes, and so we need to go to our keyframe editor, click on sphere, and you'll see the curve which causes the, the slow and speeding up. So I'm just gonna highlight both keyframes, and then interpolation and linear. And now what that means is that when we go back, we play through it again, we're going to have a constant speed as the planet rotates. Now as playing that back, I just noticed a couple of things I'm going to change. I'm going to up the opacity to 60%. Yeah, that's better. I kind of like that better. And I'm also going to go to the position and raise the Z axis by 10, just to bring the clouds off the planet a little bit. And we'll see how that looks. Yeah, that looks better, I think. Um, and that's really all we need to do. Turn my background back on and play it through. And there you are. You have a 3D planet rotating in space. Okay, thank you all so much for watching. I know it's been a long video. Um, and if you're a beginner, I hope that you um, learned something here as I did. Um, and that you can take some of this away and put it into your own projects. And I would love to see what you can do and how much better you can make it than what I've done. And I will see you all in the next video.